What's up, Enchanted Ones? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. If this is your first time here, hi, I am Danielle. And today I want to share with you all some advanced love magic techniques. Now, I've been a witch for a while. I've been a witch for um, just basically say 10 years. And I've done my research. You know what I'm saying? I've always been the type of person to do research and just read and love to learn anyway, but I have never come across what I am about to share with you all today. And so it's definitely advanced. Um, you know, when it comes to love magic, you have, you know, your general love spells, your protect the love you have spells, you know, attraction spells, get them to call you. Um, your more coercive types of spells, your compelling, your bewitching, and your follow me boy, follow me girl, and things of that nature. And this is, um, if you haven't heard of these terms, these are hoodoo spells. <laughs> Technically, hoodoo doesn't have spells. They just call it work, which really definitely puts you in the mind frame of, yeah, you're going to have to put in some effort. You know, see, I'm, I haven't named it as long as it's been here. I think I should we're going to call him Herbert. Okay, like like Jill Scott named her pimple Herbert. We're going to call, we're going to borrow the name and that's Herbert. So, <laughs> um, anyway, you've got all of these different types of spells. This, um, what I was saying was the work that puts you in the right frame of mind of that, yeah, you're going to have to put in some effort. I think um, when some people come to magic, they think it's, like a get rich quick get rich quick scheme type of approach to magic like oh the magic is going to do everything and I don't have to do anything and no you're going to still have to do mundane things and you're going to have to do magical things that actually work the spell um like what I talked about in my last video you know work your spells don't let them work you um but anyway you got all of these different types of spells but I've never seen anyone approach love magic the way I'm about to share with you all. So when it comes to increasing love, and that's this is the type of love spell I'm talking about specifically. When it comes to increasing love, um, you're in a relationship and you're trying to take your love to the next level. You're trying to take your relationship to the next level. Some advanced techniques that you can do is incorporate healing, incorporate self-love, and incorporate strength and courage into the spell. Now, you should be doing these types of spells for yourself anyway. But what I'm talking about is healing your target. Adding that. Adding a healing element, whether that's a separate healing spell altogether. And, and sending healing energy their way. Or whether you incorporate it into, you know, the actual love spell that you're doing. Like in, like adding lavender and telling it, you know, heal you know, my partner, my spouse, my whoever it is, um, so that they are better able to love me, so that they are, you know, healed enough and capable of expressing the love. Um, adding strength and courage to um, your love spells. You might have somebody that's just super shy. You know what I'm saying? You might not know just how fabulous you are, darling. And they get nervous and clam up around you. Like, they'll have this whole plan of how they're going to show you and what they're going to say and what they're going to do. And then they see you and it's like, <laughs> well, what do you want to do? Like, all their plans have gone out of there. And it's like, oh, you're not romantic. You don't do this. You don't. You make the child nervous. <laughs> You make them nervous. They, their mind goes blank, you know? It's like the little cartoons with the, the, the eyes turn to heart and they just start floating. You know, they got the vapors. <laughs> As Bernie Mac would say, they got the vapors. And they don't know what to do. So you could be dealing with somebody like that, that they have all of these plans and things. They're just super shy, you know? And it might just be around you. It's like, but I know, I know them. They this, they that, they. But they're a totally different person behind closed doors. With you, you have that effect on them. So you can add a strength and courage element, and also adding that because it takes strength and courage to heal. 
So these things tie in together, even if you're not dealing with somebody that's shy. It takes strength and courage to go through the healing process. This is why a lot of people walking around with their heads stuck in the sand because it's not easy to <laughs> improve. It's not easy to do what you know is the right thing to do. It's not easy to do what you know you're supposed to be doing. So courage, strength to be able to do these things. And healing, healing childhood trauma and things of this nature. You may be thinking it's, you know, an outside, you know, a third party type of situation. The third party could be their inner child. The third party could be their traumatic upbringing. You know, a lot of people are in relationships with people that they've been through a lot. They've hinted at it. They've given you the framework, but they haven't gone into the, the details of how they've been abused, of what they've seen growing up and just where they come from. You know, you've got, you've got a taste, you've got an idea, but they haven't gone to the nitty gritty because one, it takes strength and courage to bring that shit up even to yourself. And then to say it out loud and share it with somebody else and you don't know what they're reaction is going to be and what are they going to say are they going to you know not even intentionally some people you know I can be guilty of this you just say things and it just comes out real harsh and you don't mean it to come out harsh you know what I'm saying and it's like well damn I wish I had kept it to myself you know so it takes strength and courage to even be able to okay I'm going to share it anyway because I want to be open and let this person know this and their reaction be damned I know their heart I know what kind of person this person is so if they say something off the wall okay I'm going to charge it to their head and not their heart and, and or them just not being eloquent that sort of thing so you that could be the third party situation <laughs> and it could be absolutely no actual third party the third party could be their trauma okay so healing will help with that um if there is an actual 30 third party situation um when you're dealing with somebody that's a serial cheater healing will actually help with that as well because they could be cheating because it's you know and of course, not making excuses or anything like that, but this is all they know. They don't have the maturity, the emotional maturity to express themselves when they are discontent in a relationship. And so they just cheat and do simple shit or they have it healed to the point of maturity where they are honest enough with themselves and with you and anybody else that they might get involved in. Hey, I'm not with the relationship shit. <laughs> so don't ever think you're in a relationship with me that's not how i roll i do what i do i'm a, a free love god damn it <laughs> i was born in the wrong decade free love all of that and i i will not be tied down you i will not be tied down that's not who i am and healing so you know i feel like that would be something where you get to the healing if you're dealing with a cheater where it could go one or two ways where the relationship might not last or they heal and you don't have to worry about this anymore because they've healed to the point where this isn't an issue you know what i'm saying um so i just want to throw that out there if you're dealing with a serial cheater that that could be a possibility that the healing will just bring them to the realization that i don't do relationships they're not for me um in which case okay cut you lost you're being cheated on left and right anyway and if they do heal and come out on the other side of it though it can be a beautiful thing you just got to decide if you're in that particular situation whether they're worth it or not like what's at the end of the tunnel what what are you trying to accomplish here because it might just be better for you to just go ahead and get it up, <laughs> go cut your losses as is and worry about your spell work for a more deserving, you know, use your love spells on a more deserving individual in a more deserving and, and less toxic relationship. But I digress. Um, so add in the healing element and then add in a self-love element for your target. So they will be able to express their love to you. Because if you can't love yourself, if you're not expressing love to yourself in healthy ways, if you're not expressing love to yourself at all, a lot of times people, you know, will express love to everybody else and, and put everybody before them. And then they leave themselves out in the cold. And while we love those people, <laughs> 
it it's not healthy for them at the long run in the long run these uh, are you know bright stars that tend to burn out quick and and it's like oh they gone too soon because they gave and gave and gave and they didn't give to themselves so you want to encourage that help a person love themselves so their cup is full and overflowing and they can give it to you because a lot of times people are just it's not that they don't love you it's they haven't put in the effort in expressing things to themselves and making themselves feel good enough to know to even recognize how they can do more and be more for you because they haven't done it for themselves first you know and a lot of awareness and maturity and just perspective changes come with healing and with self-love and with having strength and courage because you end up doing things, you, are, you start stepping out of your comfort zone more when you have strength and courage. So these are some advanced techniques and some things that you can incorporate um, into your love spells. I mentioned the lavender. You can use um, my tried and trues. <laughs> it's a shame. I have dozens and dozens of herbs. But I just have my tried and trues. Um, strawberry is good for love. Um, <clears throat> but um, cinnamon and um, ginger for your strength. Um, some peppers as well. Um, I channeled turmeric early, earlier for um, when I was thinking of this video. I haven't personally worked with turmeric in this way, but when I was thinking of the herbs, turmeric popped in my head. So I'm putting it out there. Try it out. Um, and of course, your, 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 your love herbs work. Your love herbs for love spells a lot of times are good for self-love and healing as well, like your rose and your lavender and your jasmine and things of that nature. So, um, yeah. Just setting the intention for that to bring those elements in as well. So you're taking a very deep approach. I mean, this is an extremely, like like I said, this is an advanced technique because you're taking an extremely deep approach to love magic. And you're going to have so much support from your spiritual team and from their spiritual team because this isn't something that's just going to only be contained between you and you're going to be the only one that benefit. They're going to benefit from being healed and having strength and courage and more self-love. You're going to benefit from it and everybody is going to benefit from it. just the, their life in general will improve. All areas of their life will improve from improving those things. And so, you know, you can expect some drastic changes and powerful changes when you do this you know what i'm saying um because in a lot of cases a person isn't being open with you being as open with the, you as they could in a relationship it, because they haven't been that open with themselves you know what i'm saying they haven't done the shadow work that's what makes shadow work scary it's not i'm you know come across people that are afraid to do shadow work. The The scary part about shadow work is facing the parts of yourself that you're already aware of. You just don't like them. That's why you don't like to think about them a lot. It's not like it's some unknown thing. I mean, of course, yeah, there's some people out there that might do some shadow work and start having some repressed memories come up, but that's pr more than likely a, a rarity. You know, you, we most of the time, we remember all the fucked up shit we've been through. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you remember exactly what you've been through you know most of us are not suffering from memory loss in that way yeah there are people out there that this can bring up some shit but for most of us it's you know what you've been through you know what you've done um and it just makes you uncomfortable to think back on it but you're completely aware you just haven't set in it enough set in that uncomfortability enough to rise above it that's what makes shadow work scary but again i digress so um those are some advanced techniques y'all to take your love take your love take your relationship your marriage your whatever to the next level to take your love magic to the next level and you're doing it in a way where 
you are genuinely helping a person and you're not coming from a place of total selfishness because i mean let's be real yeah there's a selfish element and you could just rest in the knowing that this person loves you and accept their you know expressions for what they are but we're witches and we don't do that god damn it so <laughs> um this is how you can <laughs> take things to the next level all right thank you so much for watching make sure you hit that subscribe button damn it okay share this video like the video comment hit that notification bell and i will see you on the next one peace <laughs> bye y'all